Hi, and welcome to Living Out of Suitcases. I'm Sean Rice from the international tour of the Adipus family. We just got back from our latest break and are now enjoying our last three weeks of tour. Yes, it's very sad, but our 18-month stint in the gloom is quickly drawing to an end. So I was very happy when we got to enjoy a very Adamsy golden day in Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville is Florida's most populated city and is centered on the banks of the St. Johns River about 25 miles south of the Georgia state line and 340 miles north of Miami. There's plenty to do and see in the area, but most of the recreation activities can be found along the riverfront itself, with the largest concentration being at the Jacksonville Landing, a collection of restaurants, shops, and even an outdoor concert venue set up with beautiful riverfront views that will wow both day and night. I recommend checking out Koja, a Japanese sushi restaurant located on the second floor. Sit inside or outside and enjoy the breeze as you enjoy a wonderfully crafted meal. Now, if you venture away from the landing, the easiest way is to hop on the Jacksonville Skyway, a monorail system that is free to the public and will take you to all the major tourist locations and neighborhoods on both sides of the river. If you're in town with young ones, stop by the Museum of Science and History, which offers great hands-on exhibits that teach about the human body, Florida wildlife, the science of green technology, and offers a history history of the Jacksonville area stretching back to caveman times. You can also stop in the planetarium for some really mind-blowing shows. For the art lovers around, you must stop in at the Museum of Contemporary Art, which features works from local artists, including an atrium installment that changes three times a year, and traveling exhibits from all over the country. When I was there, there was a wonderful exhibit showcasing photographs from the New York Times. It's a perfect way to satisfy your craving for culture in this Florida getaway. It is very easy when you're on the road to forget to have a real life outside of your tour bubble. You blink, and before you know it, BAM! Six months to a year has gone by, and you haven't accomplished anything except for putting away some money, hopefully, and some sightseeing. But there is a way to make sure that you accomplish some real-world goals in your time on the road, if you put your mind to it. I'm talking about time blocking, which is actually a really good habit to have when you get off of tour, too. I used to teach this when I was a real estate instructor. Go Keller Williams! Woo! But I've kind of adapted it so it can work for anybody. First things first, make a list of two to three goals you'd like to accomplish by the end of your tour in the following categories. Personal, things like lose 10 pounds or read 10 books. Work, things like take six tap classes or find an agent. Financial, things like pay off your student loan or how much money do you want to save in your bank account by the time your tour is over. Make sure that they're broad goals, not something that you're doing already. Now, take each item and break them down into smaller steps. For example, if I'm trying to find an agent, my smaller steps may be to research theatrical agents in New York City, create a top 20 list of agents that I want to work with, keep in contact with those agents throughout the tour, and finally book an audition appointment with interested agencies. Next, you want to get yourself a calendar. One on your phone or your laptop will be fine. Or you can be really fancy and get yourself one of those handheld day planners if you want. Now, choose at least one goal from each category that you want to work on this month, and focus on breaking them down into manageable and quantifiable tasks. For example, I may decide to research 10 10 agents this month. I can do this by A, obtaining a list of New York agents, B, create a spreadsheet of all the information I've collected about these agencies, C, check out the 10 agents' websites for more information, D, contact the agencies personally for more information, and E, contact one or two people that are represented by the agency just to see if I can get some feedback from them too. Now here's the time blocking part. I'm going to schedule an appointment with myself in my calendar to accomplish each one of those tasks throughout the week. That gives me something to do when I I'm sitting around on the bus or waiting in between shows. Now, of course, the important part is to actually keep those appointments with yourself. But if you do, hopefully you will find yourself moving closer to your real life goals as your tour moves on. Now, this month, I am reading a book that was recommended by Kat, our head of wardrobe, called Across the Universe. She thought that since I love Divergent, which I did, by the way, loved it! It was awesome, even better than the movie. But that's always the way, right? Anyway, she thought I'd love this one, too. It's the beginning of another trilogy by Beth Revis. In Across the Universe, you meet Amy, a girl who left her boyfriend, her friends, and her entire planet to join her parents and be a cryogenically frozen passenger on planet Ark ship. The idea is that she and everybody else is going to wake up 300 years from now on a new planet. But about 50 years before she's supposed to wake up, someone pulls the plug in her cryo chamber and tries to murder her. 
Now she's stuck on this ship with nowhere to go, with only a few crew members who are awake, and trying to find out the secrets of the ship before the person who tried to kill her tries again. I just started reading it, and it's really awesome. If you've read it, or are planning to read along with me, let me know what you think down in the comments. Pugsley Adams, and I'd love if you join me backstage here at the Adams Family. This is Lucky, our head carpenter here at the Adams Family. So, Lucky, what do you do? Well, as the head carpenter, I'm uh, pretty much in charge of everything, to be honest. Uh, organize all the load-in stuff and the run of the show and the load-out, keep everybody in line, advance the show, make sure all the venues are going to be ready for us when we show up, stuff like that. What's the best part about your job? God, the best part about my job? It's a tough question. Seeing the whole show come together at the end of a day, especially rough days where we're struggling, and then seeing the show come together, that's the best part. That's great. What's your favorite piece of set in the show? Uh, probably the torture rack. That's cool. Yeah. Well, thanks, Lucky. You're welcome, buddy. This is Matt, our sound engineer here at the Adams Family. So Matt, what do you do? I, I stand in front of house and I mix the show, uh, try to make everybody sound good. It's my job. What's the best part about your job? Uh, all the interesting places I get to visit and all the neat people I get to meet. And what's your favorite sound effect in the show? Probably the heretic's chair. I like the one. I like the It's good. Well, thank Shocking. You. Yeah. I like it. Thanks, Matt. No problem. This is Oliver, the head electrician here at the Adams Family. So Oliver, what do you do? Uh, I am the head electrician of the, uh, the show, and I am in charge of all the lighting equipment and special effects on stage. Hmm. What's the best part about your job? Uh, getting to mess around with all the uh, cool lights and uh, watching the show out front and seeing it all come together. What's your favorite lighting effect in the show? Uh, probably the moon me scene hmm. with uh, Fester. That's great. Well, thanks, Oliver. This is Andy, head of automation here at the Adams Family. So, Andy, what do you do? Uh, like you said, I'm an automation <laughs> carpenter, and I'm in charge of the big red curtain in the show. What's the best part about your job? Uh, I would say the best part about my job is uh, probably during load-in, just setting up the curtain. It's a lot of fun. I <laughs> work by myself. And what is your worst accident that ever happened with the curtain? Uh, probably when we were in China and we didn't have power for two days. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Well, thanks, Andy. Yeah. Go away now. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, you're done, Andy. <laughs> Bye. Well, now you have met the entire crew of the Adams Family International Tour. And hopefully through these interviews with Pugsley, you've gotten to know how the backstage process really works. But that is all I've got for you this week. As always, if you know of any cool places that we can go in the last couple weeks of tour, please let me know about them down in the comments. Till then, bye bye